Howdy. So I have the privilege of talking to you for about the 85th time over the last two days about GitHub. So if you don't know what GitHub is, please go to github.com and get an account. It's free, and it will change your life. Uh, so in case you didn't know by watching uh, Clay Johnson, procurement is broken. <laughs> Uh, I want to be really specific about the kind of procurement I'm talking about. I'm not talking about services, supplies, and equipment. I'm not talking about cops' uniforms. I'm not talking about hammers. I'm not talking about toilet paper. I'm not even really talking about commoditized hardware and software. I'm talking about IT professional services. For those other kinds of procurement, uh, things that we can always do better, but uh, it's relatively simpler because it all comes down to price. With professional services like IT professional services, the lowest cost bidder is not always the one that gets selected. There's discretion in the selection process, and that's where things get complicated. So I'm going to talk to you about a fun experiment. But before we talk about the fun stuff, we've got to talk about the unfun stuff. Changing procurement will be very, very hard. Uh, Clay Johnson talked about fear-based buying earlier. Um, it's, it's true that much of the complexity in our procurement process comes from risk mitigation. These are all strategies and, and legalese and uh, methods we use to try and cover our butts if we're in government. Uh, I believe that that um, fear-based buying and all of these risk mitigation strategies that are embedded in our procurement process are a symptom of a larger problem. We have too few people inside government that understand how technology works. And wouldn't you want some insurance if you were uncertain about something? I don't know a lot about plasma TVs. So if I go to the store and I buy an expensive plasma TV, and the man at the checkout says, do you want some insurance for that expensive piece of technology you just bought in case it breaks? I say, you bet your ass I do. <laughs> and that's what we do in government. Uh, the other thing about procurement is, uh, it's true in Philly, and I'm sure it's true uh, elsewhere, is that procurement is governed by uh, city charter and city statute, which means there are 17 elected officials in city council and an elected mayor who have to go along with anything that we're going to propose. And that can be difficult. However, there is some good news. We have room to experiment, and I'm going to talk to you about one of those experiments. So when Stacy from Omidyar uh, was, was up earlier talking about procurement, she said something very instructive. The, the respondents to the Code for America Sunlight Foundation survey, 32% uh, of the respondents said that they had found workarounds, right? They had found workarounds to the current procurement process. And that's essentially what we used to bring GitHub into our uh, procurement process. Uh, in the city of Philadelphia, uh, we have some latitude with smaller uh, professional services contracts. If they fall under a certain dollar threshold, the formal requirement simply says you must go and get three quotes from vendors. That's all it says. It doesn't say how you have to get them. It doesn't say what form they're supposed to take, uh, what things they're supposed to include in this, in this quote. That's all it says. You have to talk to three vendors. That's your due diligence. So we used that as the basis for bringing GitHub into the procurement process. So why did we want to use GitHub? Um, frankly, we wanted to use GitHub because we wanted to work with people, we wanted to work with firms that believed in the things that we believe in. Uh, we value open source software. We value collaborative software development. We value building awesome things. And frankly, the existing procurement processes don't allow us to find firms that share our values. Right? We need to think about the design of our procurement process and the kind of firm that comes out the other side. Just because a firm has the organizational endurance to get through our procurement process doesn't make them the best choice for us to work with to get the best technology we can get. So let me tell you how we did this. We actually put um, what's called a gist up on GitHub. It's a sort of an abbreviated repository. And we, we described in this gist what we wanted to happen, what we wanted built. And we told anybody that was interested, if you want to bid on this, and you have a question or you want clarification, you have to put a public comment on this gist. Everyone will see your question, and everyone will see our answer. It's going to be completely transparent. And we said to uh, interested parties, you must create what's called a GitHub repository, which usually houses code, software code. But in this case, it was going to house their responses to our RFP. So they created a repo, and they invited us to be collaborators on that repo. Uh, it turned out, we didn't expect this, but it turned out GitHub is really, really useful for uh, evaluating uh, vendor proposals. Uh, we actually used, this is an example of GitHub issues. When we saw a deficiency in a vendor response, we actually created an issue in GitHub, and we were able to tag it as a bug or a question, and then we were able to assign it to a member of our team, which is actually on the vendor team, 
uh, for resolution. Now, the nice thing about GitHub issues is when an issue gets closed because they've fixed the issue or the bug, and yes, not including a cost estimate is a bug in your response, uh, we get notified, so that's great. The other thing that using GitHub let us do was it let us look at what they did on GitHub. What kind of software do they build? Uh, do people report bugs in their software? How quickly do they respond to these bugs? We got a lot of insight into the quality of their work by using GitHub. Um, so we had 10 respondents, 10 really great responses, which is more than triple the amount we're required to get for a project like this. Almost all of them were local to Philly. Uh, some of them were incredible. Um, a, a good number of the responses, we didn't tell people how they had to respond. We didn't tell them what was supposed to be in their response. We just said it had to be a repository. Uh, a lot of people, um, unfortunately, uh, put a regular PDF document um, in their repo. And when you do that, when you put a PDF document in a repo, an angel cries somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but some of them, uh, uh, some of these respondents got really creative. We gave them the room to be creative, and some of them took us up on that. Uh, one of the respondents actually um, submitted prototype code. Their submission was code that we were able to install and test. They said, here's what the basic wireframing of an app. Here's how you install it. Check it out. How awesome is that? Uh, another respondent actually created a web page using GitHub Pages, and they had these really incredible narratives of user stories. Here are the people that are going to use this app and why it's important to them. And they had done their homework. It was really, really compelling. Uh, so we ended up actually selecting uh, a, a company you may have heard of called Open Plants uh, to build this app for us. Uh, great responses, though. We had a, a really tough time picking. Uh, think about this in, in government procurement. We had a really tough time narrowing down past our top three, because everyone was awesome. They were really, really good. So if you go to myphillyrising.com, you'll see this app that we, that we had built. It's actually a community engagement app, uh, and the code is on GitHub. It will be open source, and yes, we will accept pull requests. So here's a takeaway for me. Um, when we experiment like this, when we combine things that aren't usually combined, we get something greater than we thought we were going to get, like that glorious bastard, whoever they were, that first dropped a chocolate bar into a jar of peanut butter. They got more than they thought they were going to get, and that's what we got. But for me, it really underscored this idea that the processes of government that we use to interact with vendors that provide us service, they need to be designed to get us to those firms that are going to do good work for us. They need to get us to those firms that share our values, and the current procurement process doesn't do that. So you don't just get, here, get to sit here and listen to me uh, pontificate about uh, procurement. Where are we going? What's, what's the future? Well, 32% of the respondents to the Code for America Sunlight Foundation survey said that they had some latitude. And I'm betting there's more. I'm betting more people have workarounds in their procurement system. So here is your charge if you are a government official. Find your wiggle room. Find it. Experiment. Let's figure this out. And let's use networks like the Code for America peer network to share our ideas and figure out how this is going to work. We're not going to have a comprehensive overhaul of procurement that gets passed in one fell swoop. It's just not going to work that way. We're going to do it, I guess, almost like the Code for America way, right? We're going to build these projects. They're going to demonstrate good ideas. They're going to be uh, awesome and beautiful and work really well. And those things are going to inform larger change. So find your wiggle room, experiment, and report back. Thank you. <laughs>